Some we are back, we are back. <laughs> Your boy's back. The boy is back. <laughs> All right, starting with uh, Brother Enoch. All right, so would you rather live through seven years of fasting with no plagues or 10 years of plagues with no famine? Please come, please come again. Would you rather... <laughs> please come... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm listening. Would you rather yeah. live through seven years of fasting yeah. with no plagues? So remember the plagues of yeah, Egypt. Egypt. So would you live through seven years of fasting with no plagues or ten years of plagues with no fasting? It's a serious question. But... <laughs> Okay, go on. But I think the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone. Okay. But everywhere that proceeds from the mouth of God. Mm. You see, sometimes the Bible, is, we, we, if we have that faith and we take it literal, it works according to your faith. Mm -hmm. So I think if man decides to live by the word, he can fast for seven years. Mm. Okay. But according to the plagues, or what we know, the plagues in the Bible, in Exodus and the ones in Revelations, the pains you go through, some I think it's even more than the fasting, the pains you go through. Okay, because imagine your firstborn dies. That's, that's a imagine what happened if there's total darkness, what will we even get food to eat? Mm. Imagine going out to buy, there's darkness everywhere, there's no light. Imagine there's no light in UK, you can't even go out. Mm. And it's just a sudden something. What we even get food to eat? So automatically, you can live through fasting for some days. You see? And I, I think that, I, uh, I don't want to say what is not scripture, but I was talking to uh, a man, not talking to a man, there was a uh, professor, this and he was, okay. he was saying that he, want to go, he wanted to go to the caves because he had heard of caves here in India mm -hmm. where monks who converted to Christianity, they, they go there and live mm -hmm. and pray. And some have been there years without food, without water, and they have been praying. These are called monks, isn't they, it? They are, they are monk believers yeah. or monk Christians. They have been there years. I don't want to say maybe years, don't I say, but years mm. without food, without water, and they have been praying mm. for the church. Mm. You see, men, weird men have lived on this earth before. Very weird men. Mm. Sometimes we hear some, and it's like, it's a lie, but it's true. So I think... I will choose fasting seven years because fasting. If I take it, I take God by His word. I'll okay. be able. So, brother, you not want to be a fasting machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plaguing, you know, I give the plague. <laughs> <laughs> give me, the, give me the plague. Okay, okay, go on. I'm not speaking this from the word of from the Bible. Okay. I'm speaking this from me. From, from, I can't start for not even one day. That's right. So I uh, rather take my chances with the plague. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I know if I, if I fast for even seven days, I'm finished. You think so? Yes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Maybe if not, try it though. What type of fasting are we talking about? Dry fasting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, wa no water, no food. No water, no food. I think it's impossible for someone to survive for more than seven years. two Moses, weeks, in, Moses, even yeah, two Jesus. weeks. Moses survived 30 days of fasting. Without food, dry fasting. Yeah, without food. Oh, come on, we'll get to hotel on the mountain. No water, no food. And uh, knowing me, I know two weeks I'll be, I'll die. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll rather take my chances with the you plague. Said two weeks, you'll at die. least, at least I know with the plague, you can survive. People survived from the plague mm -hmm. because not everyone in Egypt is dead. All right. Egypt is still a standing country, mm. and right now there are people in Egypt. So people survive the plague. So I take my chance of survival, but I know there's no one on this earth that survives seven years of fasting. Wow. So that's that deep. That's deep. Uh, Brother Samuel, I think you are. You are shaking your head. You want no, 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 to? No, 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 Let me pass it. You are, you oh, agree? Oh, yeah, I agree with them. Um, but Eric, yeah. yeah, give me the plague. Like bring the plague on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let them. Let them, let them <laughs> yeah, let them let come. Let them come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, let, let them, them come. come. Yeah, because fasting for seven years, hmm, it's gonna be tough. I think he's mm. had dry fasting as well. Yeah, yeah. No it's, food, it's no really water. gonna be no tough. Food, no water. Yeah, no water. it's really gonna be no tough. Water. So I mean, I will, I will, 
have my chance with the plex. The plex, you, you want you want plex? Yeah, 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 yeah. fast. <laughs> Even with the plex, when the maximum is the forty maximum days that we had, forty days maximum. All right, this one is interesting. Uh, who is looking toothless? Uh, I, mean, I think I'm not the answer to the question. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, I think it's my turn. My okay. turn, brother, brother Samuel. Okay, brother <laughs> Samuel. You know this one. You know this one is this one is this one is dangerous. Listen mm-hmm. to this. Would you rather be thrown into the furnace mm-hmm. or into the lion's den? Okay, so, I'll pass it over. I'll, I'll think about it and then I'll you, pass it over first. No, let me clarify the question. Okay, so you know the question that you asked, yeah? Okay. Is it the fiery furnace that Daniel went Yes. Mm. And then the same lions then that Daniel. Even, even, even the fiery furnace. Before they got me there. When it was, seven, he, it was, when was heated times. seven times. Before they got him. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. And I, uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me. You okay. know when you say lions then? Are you talking about the lions then from the Bible or the lions then in Kenya right now that I see people, people <laughs> petting <laughs> the lions? <laughs> Safari, <laughs> Safari Park. Park. <laughs> All right. The lions there from the Bible, from the Bible. That one, I from think. The, from Daniel, yeah. um, Apostle is the best person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit first. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, will, I will choose being the lions then, yeah. right? Okay. Because in either way, we are going to die. So I want a swift, a swift one, a, a quick a, one. A, a quick death. Yeah. But the lion. Okay. Hold no. On. This one will touch you. This one. Yeah, it's better than me. Hey, going through that going of being better, like the lions. Are you talking about the vegetarians? <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? I think I can survive the lion. Okay. Because maybe at that time they have already eaten. They were hungry lions. Oh, they were hungry lions. Okay, okay. It will also depend on. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. You know, as human beings, right? Do you know when you see some certain kinds of food, right? Okay. You'd be like, oh, this food is so thin. Okay. So I don't feel like, oh, eating, don't feel it. like eating it. I want the one that they serve, you know. <laughs> so it depends on your, 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 the your stature, you your height. So me, I think if I'm skinny. You can use the lion seeds, you will catch you straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what you, you I mean? But listen to me. Uh-huh. We are all forgetting that both Fenness and Lions then, mm-hmm. they all survived. They all survived. Uh-huh. None of them died. So why are you guys scared? <laughs> no, no, you're not talking from a Christian perspective. I am. No. It's, 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 no, no, no. It's, it's, it's a, a normal question. The fairness and the life. So why are you guys so scared? And and I, no, but you, you said, would you rather? So obviously, I didn't say, would you rather die in the fairness or... I said, mm. be thrown into... Both of them were thrown into the... Into the, into the. The, tr- the truth of the matter is, if you are going to go by this way, then I think the truth of the matter is, it all depends on your faith. Yeah. It all depends mm-hmm. on your faith. Because... Scripturally speaking, when you read the book of Isaiah, mm-hmm. Isaiah, Isaiah speaking, he said that when you pass through the fire, you shall not be burnt. Mm-hmm. When you come to the book of Psalms chapter number 34, mm-hmm. David also spoke and he said that he got all their bones and none of them are even broken. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So either way, if we are going with God, mm-hmm. either way, we will survive. Mm-hmm. Either. Mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. But if you are bringing it to a human perspective, exactly. where you have to choose Either you go through the fire or mm. you go through the la- To be honest, me, I won't choose any. <laughs> you won't choose any. I won't choose any. I'd rather die my own death. You know this question. I'm gonna die my own death. Because the matter is mm-hmm. before the before the guards even got close to the they were bent. They were bent. <laughs> they died already. <laughs> and before even you, the, 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 the uh, families of the yeah. uh, uh, the people that you know accused the yeah. okay. before they even got to the yeah. bottom of the yeah. before they were bones of, Yeah, they were broken up. But yeah. the truth of the matter is, if we are going by faith, mm. we know the God that we serve. Yeah. And we are persuaded that no matter whatever that it is. I so mean, if we go through faith, by, by faith, which one will you choose? Okay. By, fa- have, by faith, I will choose either because I'll nah, survive. No, no, no. The, the question doesn't allow you to choose either. You choose one. You choose oh, one. You don't choose. By faith. Oh, you don't. By faith, I will choose the fire and I'll dance in the fire. Yes, <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. I'll tell them to bring the lions yeah. in the fire as well. <laughs> I, I, I want to also take it from, from okay. another, another perspective apart from what okay. our, our brother said. Okay. The said. That, that, that's it. But I was also looking from the glory after that two incidents. Okay. You see, each one came with a certain kind of glory. Glory. Okay. You see, wow. And that's deep. 
for an unbeliever to say, Danny, it's your, your living God was able to save you. So Darius knew the God that Daniel served. Mm-hmm. And also, with the fire, King Nebuchadnezzar also knew the God of heavens or the God of the three Hebrew oh, boys. Wow. wow. So, because of that, Darius feared the Lord. Mm-hmm. And because of that one too, Nebuchadnezzar feared the Lord that he passed a bill or a law around, over the whole world that nobody speak against the God of Daniel. Mm. So, comparing the two glories, I'd rather go with the fire. Because that glory spread throughout the, the world that Nebuchadnezzar made a decree. Nobody should be able to against. Amen. Yeah, so I'd rather go with the, with the fire so that the That's glory deep. of God will spread over the world. Amen. That's deep. Wow. So you are, you are, you are a fireman, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. He makes his ministers flames of fire. We are flames of fire, we anyway. Flames of fire. Uh, we are fire for fire. Fire for fire. Jesus is the Lord of Judah. What are you talking about? <laughs> that one, Tuesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're not, but you're not lying. Don't forget. Don't, okay, see something. Don't forget this, okay? We are not correlating the two incidents together. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's not correlate the two yeah. incidents together. Mm-hmm. Because remember that Darius was interceding for Daniel. Oh. That's, <laughs> oh yeah. Darius was interceding for Daniel. Mm. Re- let's say regardless. Yeah. God would have stepped in. Yeah. With yeah. Darius or without yeah. Darius. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But let's just take this one aside. Okay. Let's 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 put King Darius aside. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And let's put King Nebuchadnezzar aside. Okay. Who will be interceding for you if you went to the lion's den? <laughs> That's a deep question. You know? We had an, we had an intercessor. Yeah. In, our, in our generation like this. It's, hmm. If you're very strong enough, you know, this, this is deep, you know. Hmm. Lion, Imagine going you know, to the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Enough with the questions now. We will continue next time. So our second agenda for the next maybe 10 minutes, and then we are out of here. Um, Brother Samuel. No, no, brother, somewhere there. Yes, sir. Can you share with us um, any testimony of your personal faith? As in, how did you become a Christian? Have you have, have you always wow. been born into a Christian home? Have you grown up in a Christian home? Have you just like someone is born in a like born a female, born a male? Wow. You have, you, have, you have just one ident- identity. You are, you are a male, you are a female. Mm, so mm, mm. were you born into a Christian home or was there a point where you encountered God? You thought, you know what, mm. I've heard about this Jesus. I've th- heard about God. Mm. I never knew him. Uh, this particular time, I can stand to say, this was a time I had a relationship with Jesus. Though I've heard about, about him. Mm. And, and and stuff like that. So tell us, share share with us yeah, a testimony. Powerful, powerful. Just for, I believe all my all, all our brothers are going to share that as well, right? One minute, everyone yeah. is going to share. Yeah, everyone okay, is going to okay, share okay. something very so small. So just 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 in a quick um okay um manner. So how don't don't, for, don't forget if all right. there, there are encounters, angelic encounters, say it. Oh okay 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 okay. If there are okay, mysteries, that's why <laughs> mysteries. Okay, <laughs> maybe. Uh, okay okay. I'll I'll just quickly share my um. Okay. My testimony just really quickly of how um, I became a Christian. Okay. So I was born in a Christian home, but, you know, I remember my grandmother used to take me to church, mm-hmm. you know, the church, Methodist Church of Ghana. Yeah. But at a, at a young age, I didn't know who Jesus Christ was. Okay. So I've heard about him. I've heard people be, uh, preaching about him. I've seen my grandmother going to church always. I was like, you know, and at those times, you are, if your grandmother's, grandmother is going to church, you are meant to go to you have her. No, you, you have no option. option yeah. yeah. So I remember she would take us to church, she would take us to church, etc., etc., etc. Um, so when I grew up to the age of about 14, I traveled to the UK as I'm here now. Mm. So to cut a long story short, um, one time, one time, um, a certain man of God saw me dancing in, in, the, in town. He okay. was like, yo, I want to take you to church. I was like, yo, church? What, what am I, what's the reason for church? I don't, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Then I was forced. So I go to church, and then in church, while preaching was going on, I feel so irritated. I feel like you know something was to come out of me, but I didn't yeah. know what that thing was. So um, the next day, the man of God told me that um, there's a certain prophet that is coming from Ghana. Okay. We, we went there. Mm-hmm. So the prophet of God began to minister, and he was like, let us all hold hands and pray. Mm. I didn't know how to pray at that time. All right. So whilst we're praying, whilst we're praying, whilst we're praying, I was just saying anything that comes into my head. So whilst we're praying, 
the man begins to say something. And I was like, what's going on? So all that he was in was like, oh, this young man, this young man, God is speaking to me. Mm. In my head, I was like, can God speak to you? Mm. What? What are you talking about? He said, God is speaking to me. Blasphemy. Blasphemy, you know. <laughs> God is speaking to me that this young man, that this young man, God says he's giving him a new garment. Mm. Brothers and sisters, his words didn't end. I, f- I literally felt something coming from heaven. Mm. And that thing, I don't know how, how, how to even describe it, but I felt like that thing penetrated through my head mm. down to my truth, mm. and it settled in my heart. Wow. So when it settled in my heart, I started tearing up and crying and crying. And do you know what? I started mentioning him, Jesus. Wow. Jesus. For the first time. Somebody, yeah, for the first time. Mm. Somebody that I didn't know, I've only heard about, I didn't believe. So I was mentioning Jesus while I was in tears. Mm. So um, a, a scripture confirmed this event mm. that it is only the spirit of God that can announce Jesus, yeah. that makes Jesus reveal or reveal yeah. Jesus or makes Jesus known. So I'm mentioning Jesus, then I was crying, crying. Yeah. So the next day, I, I'm just bringing it to an end. The next day, um, I, I, I entered, th- that day I entered my room, we mm-hmm. came back from the place, I entered my room. Imagine, I stayed in the room for three days without not knowing wow. that I was in the room for three days. And I felt some strange presence around me that I couldn't describe. Mm. And in dreams, I could see angels coming to me, and I couldn't look at them. I couldn't be hold. I was like, what's going on? Wow. And imagine, one of the greatest things I, I, I could say about this, it's not even about the encounters or what I saw, is that the very things that I was doing, the worldly things like drinking alcohol, mm-hmm. alcohol, having sex regularly, you know, mm. all these things left wow. in that one event in that one encounter from that day my life was transformed Hallelujah. and church became a common place for me wow that was, all right that's okay. that is that's quite i'll give it to brother Tiflos. Oh, okay. that's quite interesting yeah. so you had your yours is literally like um an encounter mm. when the brethren met yeah so when when believers christians met you came around mm-hmm. When Christians met, you came around and Jesus <laughs> appeared to you, mm. appeared to you there. Um, that's, that's quite interesting. All right, so we will we'll move straight to the Kintia Philos in just one minute or so. Let's, let's hear from you. How did you meet Jesus? How did you meet Jesus? Or how did you meet Jesus? Okay, um, mine is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a very brief, it's a very brief, brief one. one. Okay. It's a brief one. Um, I, was, I think most of us here will say that we're all born into a Christian home. Yeah. Um, I was born into a Christian home as well. Um, I think um, from, the, from the start of my Christian journey, I would say that even though I went to church, mm-hmm. I didn't know what the significance of churches, churches and being part of the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, I lived with my uncle for the most part of my life when I was young, mm. back home in Ghana. Um, I came to the UK when I was about the age of 11 mm-hmm. um, and for the, most, for the most part of my life when I was in Ghana, we went to Presby. Presby, I was part of the Presbyterian Church and I used to go to JY a lot. Okay. And I remember that during, during those time in children's service, um, I had this thing where I can memorize Bible verses, mm. literally. And I think usually those times when children's day come, my Sunday school madam would give oh. me the you will be giving me the longest Bible verses <laughs> for, me to, for me to memorize and then, you know, um, say. I think, um, and when I, was, when I was small, I've always been, I was always um, quite an naughty kid. <laughs> Not that um, I did. I, 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 let, me, let me come in a bit. It's true, because I saw one of your videos. Uh, <laughs> Oh, on YouTube, like, hey, this guy, this guy was, this guy was dancing. I'm like, 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 I'm like, hey, is this, is this, is this? I still have the video. I, I, all right, go on. Yeah, I used to be quite naughty when I when I was small, even to the point where I think I remember one incident where I even put pin, you know, pin mm. pannier, <laughs> the one that they used to sew. Oh, yeah, 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 I put one of them even on a seat for somebody to sit on. Oh. It. Oh, wow, this guy, yeah, this, guy was, was deep. this guy was wicked. Yeah, they used to they used to call me they used to call me Dr. Panier. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was quite naughty and I think um but 
I always had this. I always had this thing in me where I was always drawn to Christ. Wow. Um, wow. But I think when I came to the UK, um, even though I was naughty, like I was not that naughty. Like mm. my naughtiness was sensible naughtiness. Yeah. Mm. Like I knew when to draw the line. But mm. a point came in my life where I just went here. Fully, fully naughty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just went. I just went haywire, and um, I think. Yeah, I used to get sent to isolation quite a lot. Mm. You know, in UK, we have this thing called isolation. Wow. You go to classroom, you do something naughty, they give you a yellow card or red card, <laughs> and then they send you to isolation, and then you'll be there literally for the whole day. You will not have, you know, and I used to get into quite a few uh, a few fights and stuff. Um, and I think one day, I was just sat there to myself, and I was like, this is not actually who I am. Mm. Like, I don't know what has happened, but... This is not me. And I think I remember in those days when we were living in Saxton Avenue where I was sharing the bedroom with my, my little brother. One night, I just, I don't know what happened, but something just came up on me and I knelt down. Wow. wow. I knelt down on, on the floor and I just told God that, Lord, if you bring me out of this situation, because I know, I know this is not how you have made me and this is not how I am. Yeah. If you help me come out of this phase that I'm in, I'll give the rest of my life to you and I'll serve you. Wow. And I think I remember from that point onwards, literally, when I'll go back to school, like those desires and those tendencies in me mm. just disappeared. Wow. Mm. Disappeared all of a sudden. And from since then, I gave my life to Christ and to the body of Christ mm. to fully serve Him at all costs with all that I am. Wow. That's interesting. That's so, hold on. Before you go to Brother Samuel, would you? Would you say that Jesus had always been around, but you had not submitted yet? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say that he has, he has always been there. You know, the Bible says he's always standing at the back of the door knocking. And he's knocking. He's always knocking. Um, he's always no knocking. And he's not the only one. I, always, I say to people that Jesus is not the only one, only one that knocking. knocks. Yeah. That <laughs> there, are, there are always two entities in this world who are always knocking. knocking. Jesus is knocking and the devil is always knocking. But at the end of the day, the owner lies on you, who you choose to enter. Mm, okay. But I had always had that feeling, I had always had that sense that he was around and he was there. And I think it took that moment yeah. for me to realize that I need him. Mm. I need him in that, in, in, in that time, in that part of my life. Wow. And I mean, since then... There are a lot more stories, a but, lot more stories, but more encounters, this is, more this, mysteries. This is the more pivotal. Mysteries. This is the pivotal point yes, of sir. the journey for me. That um, yeah. All right. <coughs> All right, Mr. Samuel. All right. Um, I was yeah, say yes. I was born into a Christian home. Okay. Yeah, but my encounter wasn't. Uh, I think after JHS. Okay. When I moved from Sunyane to Accra to live with my uncle. Mm -hmm. My uncle is a pastor. For okay. Great Commission Church International. It's a national, it's a nationwide church, right? Then he is the overall overseer there, yeah. right? So I remember when I was in JHS back in Sunyane, we don't do morning devotion, right? Mm -hmm. So our Christian life was, I mean, Sundays. We don't even go for midweek or anything. So it's just Sundays that we go to church. Yeah. But then when I came to Accra, uh, every morning from 5:30 to 6:30, there's morning devotion, and then it's a rota. You lead on this day. Um, I mean, so it's a, like a rooster, you leave this day, mm -hmm. you find out the next day you are leaving. And I was living with my cousins. Okay. Right, so, uh, and then if you have to lead, you, 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 you have to, I mean, preach for, I think, 15 to 20 okay. minutes. Wow. Yeah, so that will also prepare you to learn the word of God, right? Yeah. So that was when, I mean, from, J, uh, from JHSS to SHS, that was when I started really reading the Bible and then, since he was a pastor, we're living in the mission house, right? So uh, Monday Bible said this: we have to go midweek. You have to go Friday uh, all night or Friday service. You have to go, and then mm. on Sunday. So literally, if you are living in the mission house, it's like you are living in church, church, right? Wow. And then the instruments and everything was in our place, the equipment and everything. So if any program you are called to, you know, uh, go mm. and arrange the place. Mm. So mine was like a journey. Okay. I, I didn't have any pivotal time Where that you, I encountered. Wow. Yeah, it was a journey, it's a, a slow process. Wow. Yeah, from going to church just on Sunday and then having to go to church like say four times a week. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so that was my encounter. You know, I think most, but let me say, all of us 
we, we, Jesus took us on a journey, even when we didn't know him. That's what I mean. I mean that's what I think. That even when we thought, Bible said, even when we, we were sinners, he died for us. Mm -hmm. So even when we didn't know him, he was with us. He took us through a journey. So yeah. my brother was saying that um, he, a, a, a man of God came from Ghana and he went there. Who, who told you to go there? Mm. How, did you, how did you get that ability to go there? Wow. So even before you realize that you are, uh, even before Jesus came to you, he was already with you and you wow. didn't know. Wow. Wow. So he, he was the one that drove you, mm. just like Saul. He mm. drove you to the church. Mm. So for me, I think God is with everyone. But there's a point where you will get to, he, he will lead you. That's why you, you didn't die before you met him. Yeah. You could have died. Yeah. So someone was saying that he had to go to a different location to, to yeah. stay with someone. Yeah. Yeah. That move was orchestrated by God. Wow. It was not by his strength. It's true. Yeah. It's true. So he said, this guy, okay, you, you don't want to repent uh, when you are six years, seven years. Okay, don't worry. When you're about to go to school, I will, I will send you to someone. And by that, in, in that place, you will become the man you want. Uh, I mean, that's he wants you to be. That's, that's, so, that's, 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 that's actually interesting. The apostle himself is going to speak. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Tell us how you. I, I was. I would say maybe I was not like I was not born into a Christian home. Mm. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I never grew up to see my parents going to church. I never grew up to see. Wow. My dad's dad. My, my, maybe my grandfather was a. A herbalist to a fetish priest. So, when seriously, oh yes, your granddad was a herbalist. Yeah, stroke fetish no, priest. I didn't come to meet him, but my father used to tell me stories, and not only stories. Yeah.